desires, uh, but it's ridiculous. And of course, if we over the control of Chrysler to a combination of labor unions and government, does anybody think that we're going to be possible? Is it going to be any more efficient than Amtrak or the post office? It's going to be perpetual bailouts. Uh, what about General Motors? I mean, General Motors, uh, it, it, it seems to me that the government is laboring mightily to avoid exposing General Motors to a neutral, life-tenured federal judge in the bankruptcy court who will follow the rule of law when deciding amongst creditors, vendors, uh, shareholders, uh, bondholders, unions, whoever makes a claim on anything because of the authoritarian tendency of this administration to want to say this is the way it's going to be. Will people buy General Motors cars if the government is providing the warranties? Well, I mean, they're not buying much now, but I mean, the whole, the whole thing is we have a process Did we lose him? Okay, all right. They'll they'll, uh, well, they'll they'll get him back. You wanted to weigh in, RJ. I, I would answer that. What does the RJ stand for? Uh, you don't Richard Jason. Richard Jason. That's but in Oklahoma, name. it's RJ. That's right. All right, RJ. Well, you know, to, to you know, answer the question there that uh, Peter was trying to finish up is, you know, I, I know a lot of folks that that are thinking that very same thing. Why should we buy? You know, why should we buy products from companies that are being bailed out by the by the federal government and and redistributing our wealth to, to companies that are basically failing? And we have a free market solution to these things. These these companies are supposed to go bankrupt. Uh, they're supposed to restructure if possible. And if they're not able to restructure, their their assets are supposed to be sold off to folks that can then re-employ them back into the economy. Do, do, do you detect, Shelley, either from the people that email you all the time or just from the folks uh, that you work with, that there's any understanding out there uh, amongst people that the more the government borrows and spends, the worse the problem will be, and the more of the private economy that the government takes over, the less prosperous those segments of the economy will become. I think we're slowly moving in that direction, kind of one person at a time. But a lot of a lot of America, I think, is used to hearing the sound bites that they hear on the news, and you know, things principles that are explained very simply, and you know, made kind of packaged to sound appealing. And that's what they hear on TV. That's what they read in the news, and that's kind of what makes sense to them. So it's really a matter of, of you know, getting shows like this out there and starting to kind of delve deeper into these issues. And you know, it, it helps that the current events are supporting what you guys have been saying all along. It kind of helps to illustrate these principles. And I think the longer this goes on, the the um, better the better the message is going to sell to people. We, uh, we have our good friend Peter Schiff back with us. Do you have any emails or tweets uh, specifically directed at Peter Schiff? Yeah, uh, here's one coming in from Jay for Liberty. Uh, for Mr. Schiff, what should be the first thing that is done to fix the economic problems? The first uh, thing. Peter, we have a, a tweet for you, and the question is, what is the first thing that should be done to address our current economic problems in accordance with principles of the free market? Well, I mean, the first thing we have to do is stop making them worse. I mean, unfortunately, the government is, is, is doing everything wrong. We have to understand that we're in trouble not because of the free market, because of government interference in the free market. We need to return to sound money and limited government and let the market sort out the problems that were created by government intervention. We're not going to dig our way out of this hole by, by digging it deeper. And unfortunately, you no, know, we're just talking about with the auto bailouts. I mean, the government feels it has to involve itself in everything. Every time the government gets involved, it screws things up and makes things less efficient. It leads to, uh, uh, you know, a poor allocation of resources. It diminishes our standard of living. Uh, you know, we, we need to understand the principles in this country, which in the first place, and we have to go back to them. And what can we do to, to get this message out to the people that write the laws if they're so biased in favor of uh, we're going to bring up the poor by bringing down the rich mentality, Peter? We have to understand that most of these politicians have their own agenda. You know, they're not looking out for the country's interests. They're looking out for their own interests. You know, it's amazing how people seem to trust politicians, and they don't trust uh, businessmen or entrepreneurs, but it's the politicians who can harm us. They're the ones that can tax us, regulate us, and we have no choice. You know, a businessman, all they can do is try to please us. They try to give us products that we want to buy. And try, that we want. There's a lot of power in their own agenda. 
want to get the gut big. You know, they're like a parasite. And what's good for the parasite is not necessarily for the host. Got we it. have to find a way to cut off the blood supply from the government and stop them. I don't think they're going to do anything on their own. Peter uh, Schiff, always a pleasure. Until next week uh, on Freedom Watch, thanks very much. Shelley, any last thoughts or any last tweets? Because our hour is almost up. Here's something that just came in from Freeze Dried News. Uh, he says, how do we persuade the independents? They are the key to stopping uh, what's happening, not our talking to ourselves. And I think that's a good point, that we need to just talk to everybody, you know, our, our friends and our neighbors, and try to be reasonable and explain what's going on. And that's how we're going to make progress. And, and how do people reach you if they want to email you about this, Shelley? Well, uh, you can find me at BreakTheMatrix.com or Twitter.com slash Shelly Roach. Always a pleasure. Until next week on Freedom Watch, your, your final thoughts. You came all the way to New York, whether it's for fundraising, whether it's for national media exposure. You're going to go back to where uh, General Tommy Franks lives, and you're going to try and persuade the conservative Republicans that are big government Republicans to vote for another Ron Paul. What's your best argument? Well, I, I honestly think that the, mo the majority of the Republicans in the state and in the country and definitely in the 4th District aren't the big government Republicans. They're just not the, been getting their voices heard lately. And we saw that on, on uh, April 15th of 2009. We saw uh, grassroots Republicans and conservatives standing up you know, all over the state. 10, 000, seven to 10,000 of them showed up at the state capitol. Uh, but if you want to hear more about my positions on this, I just invite folks at home to visit my website, rjharris2010.com, and, uh, and read my position on these issues when you've got more time. Well, Mr. Harris, we wish you well. We wish you success in this, uh, in this endeavor. And I hope the next time you come back here, Eric Bowling and I get to call you congressman. All right. Eric Bowling is, of course, look at that face. That's the handsomest face in all of the news media, much oh, less at Fox God, News. God, God, God. He, run, stop, he stop. runs Strategy Room at 3 o'clock oh, yeah. now. Good. Were you as scandalized uh, as I uh, when Chrysler begged the government to buy its stock? Yeah. And then look what happened. The UAW, who's done everything right from their own standpoint, they've done everything wrong from the taxpayer standpoint, everything right but from their own standpoint, said, yeah, we'll take Chrysler. We'll take 55% of Chrysler. What are they going to do with that, Judge? And where are they going to no get No one them? wants that. They, oh, please. Well, but what about the concept of this packaged bankruptcy, the concept that bureaucrats in D.C. will decide who gets the money? shareholders, bondholders, creditors, vendors, rather than a neutral, life-tenured federal judge in accordance with the law yeah. of the land. Listen, all I, it, I, I don't care who gets it. I just want them to renegotiate. I want, I want a manufacturing um, center in Detroit. I don't care if they make cars, if they make trains, they make airplanes, make something, break that UAW contract because that's the stranglehold. That's the one that's choking the Midwest. I'll see you on Happy Hour, 5 o'clock Eastern, Wonderful. on the Fox Business Network. Awesome, Judge. Until next week at this time, from your good friends at Freedom Watch, 2 o'clock Eastern, 11 o'clock in California on Wednesday. Stay free.